Welcome back for a new edition of Video Game News. This is for April the 17th. And filming this, happy Easter if you celebrate Easter. So, with that said, first looking at box office over the previous weekend numbers. Um, first up, this is obviously April 8th to April 10th. Uh, first up, Morbius, unfortunately, would drop, of course, to second place and would have a significant drop at that. A, it went down 73.8%, so quite a hefty drop. Uh, total, box office-wise, Morbius has made, domestically, made $10,201,332. And worldwide, as of previous weekend, it has made globally $126,378,553. Uh, number one, at, of course, last weekend box office was Sonic 2. It would open domestically at $72,105,176, making it arguably probably a just about the most successful opening weekend for a video game film. I believe there may have been like one other film that did more, but still that is very impressive for the second film. Also, uh, worldwide it opened to $142,105,176. So it opened pretty successfully. I'll be curious to see this weekend come to tomorrow. And I'll probably have that on next week's edition news. So, with that said, also some stuff and news. Uh, Sony invests $1 billion into the Epic Games Metaverse, as it's being called. Also, some news from uh, Square uh, celebrating the 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts, which is hard to believe. Kingdom Hearts is now 20 years old. If that, maybe that'll help like myself and many others because I remember picking up the first Kingdom Hearts game. The first week it came out, playing it for the first time on PS2. Definitely very good memories of that game. Same thing with Kingdom Hearts 2. But with that said, uh, two new Kingdom Hearts games coming to Android and iOS you have also the uh, special thing Kingdom Hearts 20th Union X well these are the mobile games Union X is the first also known as like Dark Road which is supposed to be sort of like ending a little bit more story, backstory rather, to uh, Master Urquis and uh, Master Xehanort, or Xehanort, however you want to pronounce his name. Also, we got a teaser trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4. And of course, we see a certain girl actually in an apartment with Sora. Also, weirdly enough, Sora's clown shoes are gone, he's wearing like normal size shoes. But talk about a jump up in the graphics department, looking at, like, some of, I guess, supposedly what's going to become gameplay and stuff. Um, dang. Kingdom Hearts 3 was quite a leap ahead of Kingdom Hearts 2, but Kingdom Hearts 4 is really going farther. And you can tell that, uh, just from the trailer and some of the character designs and stuff, you can definitely tell that this is a sort of a passion from Nomura. And of course, uh, remember the somewhat cancelled game known as Final Fantasy 13 Verses, as it was called, which would become Final Fantasy 15. But it's obvious that he's using a lot of elements that he originally had for uh, for. 13 verses he's implementing in Kingdom Hearts 4. So Nomura is going to get some of his love 
that he had for verses 13 out through KH4. So interesting. Also, we see a post-like thing towards the end of the trailer with, um, it looks like, also one of the things you look at in the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer, it shows a forest, and if you look at certain elements in the trailer, there's a lot of speculation, no definite evidence of any kind, but there's speculation that it could actually be the forest moon of Endor. That is the force in the trailer. Now, personally, when I saw certain stuff, I first saw the trailer, I was like, maybe it was a more in-depth version, a more detailed version of the forest from uh, Twilight Town is what I was thinking. But a lot of people are saying and speculating it could be the force moon of Endor, which, in case that is true, we could be looking at a Star Wars world in Kingdom Hearts 4, which would be interesting to say the least now hopefully we do get a return to pirates of the caribbean and please bring back elements from kingdom hearts 3 with the naval battles from the previous kingdom hearts world or pirates world because those naval battles was fun i legitimately probably ended up playing about 10 hours of just naval battles that's how much fun and addictive the gameplay was Easily my favorite world in KH3. But with that said, also you have something in the other thing that is going to be coming out for mobile devices. Game is called Missing Link. Now it's a game that actually has my interest. Because it kind of looks graphically, it's not great, but it's better than most of your mobile stuff. It looks like a game, actually, it would have come out probably on the PS2, honestly. Also, uh, Activision Blizzard converts all U.S.-based Q&A testers to full-time employees with benefits, increased wages, but we'll see how long that lasts, given at least until next year. Bobby Kotick will still be calling the shots, so we'll see. Also, THQ Nordic has an event scheduled for August, since EA was, or E3 was cancelled this year. So, THQ is going, Nordic is going to be doing its own, like, presentation in August, which should be interesting. Of course, uh, already Sony and Nintendo were already doing their own sort of thing anyways. Uh, of course, EA canceled theirs, but let's be honest, I don't think anyone really cares about EA. Also, um, there's talks going on about Max Payne remakes are coming from Remedy Entertainment. After Deal with Rockstar that was made. Also, um, it's been officially announced that... Bug Snacks is coming out on um, is going to be going multi-platform from what it was a Sony exclusive. So yeah, Bug Snacks is going to be coming to all platforms, including Game Pass, on April the twenty-eighth. So if you have an Xbox One or Series X slash Series S, and you're being curious about Bug Snacks. Well, on the 28th, if you have Game Pass, you can try it out. Also, there's a expansion coming also alongside with it called Isle of Big Snacks. That's where some of the names. Also, quickly, uh, there's a deal, some deals going on right now on the Windows Store for Xbox fans. Just a few deals I wrote down. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, which is um, includes the expansion DLC and everything included for $30. Um, Far Cry 6 for $40. Disco Elysium, the final cut for $20. And I do, as I've said before, I'll say it again, I highly recommend Disco Elysium. If you have a chance, check it out. Also, Assassin's Creed Valhalla 
for $28, but I'd say wait in there several months because it's a Ubisoft game, and Ubisoft games tend to go down really quick in price. Also, Halo Infinite you can, is right now, the single player campaign is on sale for $20. So, if you're interested in Halo Infinite, and you want to play the single player, of course, I ended up showing out like $50 or whatever to get the game, because I'm all about the single player campaign and stuff like that when it comes to Halo. I don't play the multiplayer, never have, never will. It's just not my thing. But, heck, if you want the single player content, I recommend taking advantage of this at $20, that's a great deal. Halo uh, Master Chief Collection, supposedly consider it on sale, uh, $26, though, to be fair, you can probably find a cheaper physical from GameStop or on eBay. Which, of course, I recommend that because I'm a big fan of preservation. Also, It Takes Two is on sale for $20. If you have a buddy that you can do co-op with, this is a game you might want to look into. It's considered one of the best modern co-op games now on top being an indie game. Plus one game of the year last year. It's nice to see indie games getting that stuff. Also, Minecraft Dungeons is on sale for $17. This includes expansion, DLC, and stuff included. Also, Red Dead Redemption the basically Game of the Year edition is on sale for $24. Now, of course, that includes all the expansions, the zombie, everything. Also, Resident Evil Village is on sale, in fact, half off. $30, bucks, which is not a bad deal. I recommend looking into it. Honestly, Resident Evil Village is very unique and very different from any other Resident Evil game prior. Though I would have said the same thing previously about uh, RE7. But RE8 is very unique and very different than any other pretty much Resident Evil. Though you definitely see a heavy amount of RE4 influence in the game. Also, Hitman 3 is on sale for $20. And the last of games I thought I'd mention is Yakuza Like a Dragon for $29. Though if you have Game Pass you can already play it. Though it's a superb game, if you like, um, basically, uh, turn-based combat, you might want to check out Yakuza Like a Dragon, since it plays nothing like any of the previous tiles in the series. Though, Yakuza is a series that I have actually definitely am more attracted to over things like Grand Theft Auto, which I've never been the biggest fan of. Yakuza has appealed to me a lot more overall. I think because the more interesting elements in the Yakuza series. Plus, as a long-time Sega fan. Also, uh, just a couple of things from Metacritic Games. Uh, MLB, Major League Baseball, the show, PS5 version, has a 78% critic score, a 6.6 .6 user. PS4, no critic score, has a 6.6 .6 user. Switcher version has no critic but has a 6.9 user uh xbox one no info on critic uh 4.3 user series x has a 78 percent critic and a 5.4 user and the only other game is called puzzle quest 3 no info for the pc version the only other version of this puzzle game is for ios and it has a 66 percent critic score no user score so, with that said, I'll see y'all next time. Have a good Easter. Also, my review for Stranger of Paradise should be coming out in hopefully the next couple of days. I am, as of right now, like 90% through the game. I only have like two missions left and I will be done. I've just been really enjoying going back to some of the older stuff to try to increase the amount of levels and stuff on the jobs because I will say quickly before the review cut this up the job system is arguably my favorite probably thing overall about the game love the job system it is so good compared to it's like the best job system in a Final Fantasy game in many years in my opinion so definitely I do have definitely some very good highs to talk about with Stranger of Paradise. 
I thoroughly enjoyed the game more than most people, I think. The gameplay itself was great, but I'll talk about that in the future. See you next time. Stay safe. Remember to thumbs up this video, like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and let me know what your thoughts. And the music in the background is from the great indie game Air Memories of Old, which I've done a full playthrough of back in the past. If you're all curious, check out gameplay. It's fun, and the game's constantly on sale, dirt cheap, just to, like usually. A lot of times you can find 4 or $5 on sale, so check it out. It's a really fun game. The music is superb. But I'll see you all soon enough and stay safe and our thoughts and prayers are with everyone in Ukraine as well as many people in Russia. Stay strong, stay safe, see y'all next time.